Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode in a series I am starting on how I create Discord bots using Python from scratch. This series is intended for both those who have experience coding and people who are brand new. In this episode, we'll go over the steps to get started programming with Python and creating a very basic Discord bot that simply sends a message when it comes online. And uh, on that note, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the official Python website, which I will have linked in the description. And you want to go to the downloads page, which should be the actual link given. And right here you should see an orange button with the version for your computer, and you're going to want to go ahead and download. So I'm going to go ahead and save this into a folder I have for these types of downloads. Once you have it downloads, we're going to go ahead and run it. The steps here are very important, so please make sure that you are following along closely. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click Customize Installation. You want to you want need to make sure that you have pip checked, and that you have uh, I really the only thing necessary here is pip. If you don't have pip, you're going to have a, a difficult time. Next thing you want to do is you can choose the installation location. I already have a location selected, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to 3.8.2. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to need to make sure that you have add Python to environment variables checked. You need to make sure that's checked. Otherwise, you won't be able to run any of your programs without a lot of effort. All right, and once you've done that, go ahead and hit install and let it do its thing. Once you finish your installation, you should see this setup was successful screen. You can go ahead and hit close and we should be good to go. The next step on our list is actually going and creating a Discord bot application through Discord. To do this, you'll need to go over to the Discord developer portal, which I also have linked below. For me, uh, sorry, you'll be on this page, the applications page. And for me, I have a bunch of applications here. You won't have any unless you've created uh, applications before. So what, I, what we're going to do now is up in the top right, you're going to click new application. And it may require you to add, to uh, turn on two-factor authentication for your system first, for your account, um, just because some extra developer securities. So go ahead and do whatever you need to activate your developer account, and then go over to create a, an application. You're going to give an application a name, so I'm going to call mine tutorial bot, just because I don't know what else to name it. And here you could also select a team for your bot. So I have a list of teams here. I'm not going to be using any of them. I'm going to keep it on my personal and anything on your personal can be moved to a team later. Anyways, go ahead and hit create once you're done with that. And you'll see we now have a bot application, not a bot application, just a Discord application. We need to add a bot to this application. So over here on the left, you'll see there's a bot tab. We're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to click the add bot button. It's going to ask you to confirm. You're going to want to go ahead and hit yes. And now you'll see that a bot has appeared. Now you can change the bot uh, profile picture separate from the uh, account profile picture for the general information tab. But you can give this whatever image you want. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as the default for now. And we're gonna go back to the general information tab. So what you're gonna need to do is now we need to add this bot to our server. So in my case, I've created a tutorial server for the sake of this, or just simple default server and since I have that server I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy the client ID which is on the general information tab I'm going to hit copy on that you're going to go to the third link in the description which is right here and up in the link you're going to replace all of these X's with your client ID that you've just uh, copied go ahead and go to that link and you should see the name of your bot and wants to ask you to connect to Discord, and it'll tell you which account you're signed into. And you have a list of servers that you can select. So in this case, we have the tutorial server. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna hit continue. And now, what I've done with this link is I've set it by default to give it administrator permissions. Um, this will just let your bot do everything on your server. You don't have to worry about specific permissions. But one thing you need to be careful about is to make sure you don't accidentally show your token or uh, login secrets information to anyone else because if anyone gets access to this program that has administrator access to your server, they can control everything. 
So you can uncheck this if you don't like this, or you can leave it checked. For me, I'm just gonna leave it checked. Go ahead and hit authorize. Confirm the captcha. And now it should say authorized. And then in your Discord, you should see tutorial bot just showed up and there it is. So now we have a bot account in your server. We can finally get to programming now. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go ahead and create a folder somewhere where we're gonna write all of our code. So for me, I have in my Python folder created a tutorials folder and this is where I will be opening or all, or writing all of our code. And I've gone ahead and opened this in my code editor, which is Adam. And if you guys are interested in seeing a tutorial or a video on how I've set my Atom up, because there's lots of plugins and extra things you can get set up here, let me know in the comments and I'll see about making a video on how I set this up. So you see, right now, there's no files in this folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the folder. We're going to, actually the first thing we need to do is go into the view tab at the top. And you're gonna make sure that you've checked hidden items and checked file name extensions. This is gonna make your life a lot easier. Now you can go back to the folder, go ahead and right click, new, we're gonna create a text document. And you'll see now that we also show the extension here. So we're gonna get rid of all this and I'm going to name the file main.py. And it'll ask you if you wanna change the file extension, you go ahead and click confirm on that. Now pi, .py is the file extension for Python files. So anything that's written in Python code that you actually plan on running needs to be in a .py file extension. And you'll see in the editor here, we now have that file available to open. So now before we can actually get to writing code for the bot, we need to do one last step, which is actually installing the discord.py library. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna open a command prompt. So the way, one way we do this on Windows is up in this search bar, you can type in CMD, go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see now that well, we are in the Python tutorials folder on our command line right here. So you need to make sure that this command line is open to whatever folder you're gonna be writing your code and creating your Python files in. And now in here, you can copy this command from the description, but we're going to type in pip install dash u discord.py and I'm going to go ahead and type in voice in brackets there and now if you never plan on making any sort of voice commands uh, that involve the bot joining a voice channel and talking or sending media there you can go ahead and just install discord.py but I would like to eventually do some voice commands so I'm going to go ahead and install everything and include the voice in brackets I'm going to go ahead and run that and you'll see it'll download all of the dependencies for discord.py. Should only take a few seconds and you'll see right away when we're already ready to go. Uh, you might see a warning telling you that your pip version is out of date. Um, you can either ignore that or you can run the command that it gives you here. It's not going to affect you in the short term. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and minimize the command prompt, not close out of it, we are gonna need it later. And now we can actually get to writing code. So in our main.py file that I've created now, the first thing we're going to type is import discord. Now discord, this is the module that we just imp it was installed using our pip command in the command line. So now that we've done that, we can import it into our file here. And all of the functions and abilities that the discord module has is now available to us in our code here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna import one more thing. We're gonna say from discord.ext, that's discord a sort for extensions. We're going to import commands. So now from the discord extensions, we are going to be importing the commands module. And this is gonna give us all the tools we need to actually create a bot. So next, what we're going to do is we're gonna actually create the instance of our bots. So we're gonna create a variable called bot in this case. And we're going to set that variable equal to commands.bot. And what this will do is it'll create an instance of a bot and assign it to our variable. So now that we've created this bot instance and assigned it to the variable, inside of these parentheses, we're going to type in command underscore prefix 
peoples and then you can name you can have this prefix be whatever you want this is going to be the prefix that comes before each of your commands that you've attached to the bot so in my case just for an example i'm going to use exclamation mark because it's a very common one i'm also going to give it a description and this is mostly just for your notes in terms of writing the bot um but i'm going to go ahead and call this hero coast underscore hm that's me it's custom bot so this is my custom bot. I'm just writing a quick description on that. And the last thing I'm going to put in here is case insensitive. If I can spell sensitive, which I can't. Case insensitive is going to equal true. Now, the reason that I'm saying case insensitive equals true is because by default, any commands that you put into Discord, like if I were to type in exclamation mark help, and if I were to type in a capital H here, and the command is actually exclamation mark help, all lowercase, you, this would not be a registered command because it is case sensitive by default. So by turning it to case insensitive, no matter what I put in terms of capitalization, it'll be considered a valid command. So now that we've done that, we've successfully created our bot instance, given it a prefix, given a description, and told it that the case, is, case should not be sensitive. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually add in the statement that runs our bot. So what we're going to do is we're going to say bot.run. And now this is where we're going to have to give it the token. Now this is the one thing that you should never share with anyone pretty much ever unless they are also going to be running the same bot. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your developer portal, and you go to the bot tab, and here it'll give the option for a token. You can go ahead and hit copy. And if by any chance this gets revealed, you can go ahead and hit click, click uh, regenerate and place it back into your file again. And what I'll be doing in between every episode before the episode goes live is I'll be regenerating this token just so I can avoid people copying it. Anyway, you can go ahead and click copy on that token. You can go back to your code and you can go ahead and paste it in right here. Now what we're gonna do next is we're going to say bot equals true. And what this means is that Discord will recognize this bot, uh, this uh, login attempt from this token as being a bot account, not a user account. And we're also going to say reconnect equals true. And what this will do is if anything happens and the Discord bot's link to Discord is severed or disconnects somehow, it'll attempt to reconnect. So this is all you really need. If we were to run this right now, the bot would come online, but it wouldn't do anything at all. It wouldn't even tell us that it came online. It would just suddenly show up as online right here in Discord. So what we're going to do really quick is we're going to add a message that gets sent when the bot comes online. Now to do this, before we can do this, we are going to need to get the channel ID that we want to send a message in. So, so what you're going to need to do is go to your user settings. So under appearance tab, under app settings, under appearance, you're going to scroll down until you find the advanced section and you'll turn find developer mode. And what you need to do is make sure that developer mode is turned on. Now what you can do is you can right click on the channel and click copy ID. And now we can go back to our code. Now in our code, I'm going to go ahead and just paste this ID in here just so I can keep track of it. And I'll reuse that in just a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to say async def on ready. And what this means is we're declaring a function. A function is a set of instructions that can be called whenever something, whenever it's, you can call it whenever you want essentially in coding. And so in this case, we've created a function by defining it, that's what this def means, as on ready. So the function is called on ready. And this async part means that we're defining it as an asynchronous function, which means that this function can run at the same time as other processes within our bot, and it won't interfere with each other. If I were to just say def on ready, this is now a synchronous function, not an asynchronous function, which means that whenever this function is running, nothing else in the bot can be running. But we don't want to do that because that would interrupt other processes in the bot and make commands not work as quickly. So we are going to define this as async, and we're also going to before it, right, at bot.event. And what this means is that we are assigning to our bot an event. So we've added a decorator is what this is called to our function that says the bot is now being assigned an event and that event is an on ready event. 
So now this, this function will be triggered whenever the bot becomes ready or whenever it successfully logs in and is connected and ready to execute functions and commands. So inside of this function, we're going to type in print. I am connected to Discord. And this will just let us know in the command prompt when the bot's connected. However, if we want to send a message to Discord when the bot's ready as well, we're going to create a channel variable and we're going to set this equal to bot.get channel. So we're going to go, this will be executing a function that's assigned to the bot and we're going to use the bot to get a channel and we're going to go ahead and grab our ID here and paste it inside. So now what we're going to do is our bot is going to get a channel with that ID that we copied from Discord and it's going to assign that channel to the channel variable that we've made. And then right underneath that, we're going to say await channel.send I am online. So what this says is now we are going to await, which in an asynchronous function, when you await something, you wait for this function to finish before you con continue to the next thing. So if I had a print statement in here, this print statement would not happen until this is done sending to Discord. So that's why you would await things. And we're taking the channel that we've just gotten, and we are taking this channel, and to this channel, we are sending the message in here. And now, you could just leave this as a string, just like this, but what I like to do is I like to say content equals this, and this tells it for sure that this is a message because later on we'll be using these for sending embedded messages instead. But right now, we aren't gonna deal with that. And that's, uh, this is kind of it for the code for this episode. This is the entirety of a bot logging in to Discord and sending an online message when it loads into that channel. So we can go ahead and do is open up the Discord now. And you're gonna go back to that command prompt that we had before where we did the pip install. And I told you to not close it. And this is still open to the same folder where our uh, file is. And we can go ahead and type in Python main dot pi. What this is going to do is going to run our program. So you see if I run it by hitting enter, the bot just came online and it says, I am connected to Discord. And here in Discord, in the channel that we copied the ID from, it sent a message that says, I am online. And you'll see on the right, it's online. So there you have it. Um, if things didn't go correctly up to this point and it didn't come online, uh, I would recommend just kind of going back through the tutorial, go through step by step, make sure you got everything correctly. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, if you guys are enjoying the tutorial series, this, this one is kind of going to be the longer first episode because I had to show how to install all the Python things and get everything set up. Um, now we're going to go a little bit quicker in terms of episodes, so things will be a little bit shorter. And each episode we should see a new feature or new function added. And I'm going to slowly, gradually transition to using the exact same system that I use in my Discord bots today. So yeah, uh, that's the first episode in the series. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Gotta plug that a little bit. And uh, have a good one. I'll see you guys later.